And here at the very end of the end of all of the sermons, at the very end of the book of Deuteronomy, Moses gets to the most crucial things he could possibly tell anyone. Here he gives us the solution to what could be called the ultimate human problem. And basically the book of Deuteronomy is God's blueprint for how he wants human beings to live. And it's a marvelous blueprint. It's a vision of a life of integrity and joyful unselfishness. We know what is right to do, we can't do it. That's the ultimate problem, the human race. That's the biggest problem. We know what to do, we're powerless to do it. What's the solution? Look at this, it's an amazing. This is a gift of God. This is not something you can do. It's something that God does. Verse six, in spite of being banished, in spite of all the curses, in spite of the fact that you've, you know, you know, you've blown it. Verse six, the Lord your God will circumcise your hearts. And the heart controls not just the emotions, but also the thoughts and the actions. Why? Because in the Bible, the heart is the seat of your most fundamental commitments. The things that you most hope in, you most believe in, you most look to, and you most live for. The things that you look at and say, if I had that, that, then I would be happy, then I would have meaning, then I would have value. Whatever those things are that you look at like that, that determines everything. The heart is the place where you decide what most turns your crank what's most exciting, what most captures your imagination, what you most love, what you most find beautiful and attractive. And whatever those things are, that affects everything else. That shapes everything else. To say you need a circumcised heart is God's way of saying, and Moses' way of saying, it's not enough to obey God out of duty alone. It's not enough to obey God externally only. It's not enough to only serve God because you have to. You ought to serve God because you want to, because you love to. The being of God, the greatness of the being of God demands a love that can't be the response to a demand. The being of God, the greatness of the being of God requires a love that cannot just be a response to a requirement. What do you do with your solitude? When you don't have to think of something, when you have nothing to do, when you're just sitting there twiddling your thumbs, you're waiting for a bus and the bus doesn't come, what what do you automatically, instinctively love to dream about? Wish for, plan for, what do you most like reading about? What do you most instinctively, automatically love to do? Not because you have to, just because you want to. That's where your heart is. And those things, those things are the things you set your heart on. But the greatest thing in the world, the greatest thing in the universe, the most beautiful thing, the most worthy thing, the most great thing in the world is what? It's God. But our hearts don't fix on that. What if, however, you got a circumcised heart? What if, however, God came in from the outside and fixed your heart so that the thing you most ought to do was the same thing you most wanted to do and loved to do. That's a circumcised heart. That's an astounding thing. That the thing you most want to do, the thing you most, is the thing you ought to do. And that's the reason why you've got this, you know, this uh, just John Newton hymn that goes like this that I so often like to quote. Our pleasure and our duty Though opposite before, since we have seen his beauty, are joined to part no more. That's a new heart. People with a new heart love and obey God for the beauty and attractiveness of who he is in himself.